Alan James was exposed to race walking early, first learning the technique at the age of 10, but not actually racing for another two years. When his coach asked him to race an 800 meter race walk out of meet, he won his division, but lost to two girls from an older age group. While not exactly a politically correct motivation, losing to the girls was something James didn't want to have happen again. In high school, James skipped track to concentrate on cross country, soccer, and swimming. Attending Western Washington University, he quickly became a thorn in the University of Wisconsin Parkside's plans for dominance. By the time James graduated from Western Washington University in 1987, he was a four-time All-American. Armed with a degree in business administration, James went to work for Athletes in Action and became a player on the U.S. walk scene. In 1990, he broke into the top 10 rankings for the U.S. at 20K, holding the number one spot from 1992 until his retirement from full-time training. When James decided to finally give the 50K walk a try back in 1994, he went after the 31 mile plus race in a big way. Speeding up over the second half of a Palo Alto, California race, he clocked a 3.55.39, taking more than a minute off the American record set by Marco Avaniak six years earlier. For the first time since Tim Lewis, excitement about U.S. race walking grew. James followed the national titles at both the Olympic distances of 20 and 50K. In 1995, he broke the four-hour barrier again with his time of 3.59.27 for sixth at the Pan Am Games. Hope soared for the U.S. to contend in the 1996 Olympics in Athens. Who would have a better chance than James, who was training nearby in oppressive heat and humidity? After years spent training to race the 50K at peak fitness in the searing heat of Atlanta, James won the trials with the fastest U.S. time of the year. However, the best laid plans of mice and men often go astray. On August 2nd, the heat lifted in Atlanta. Hoping for a hot day, James instead received what most athletes consider a gift, an unusually cool day. The race was a very fast one, but James had prepared for a battle in the heat. Finishing 24th with a time of 4.01.18, a solid performance, he still wished he could do better. Shortly afterwards, James went into semi-retirement. Kurt Clausen has been race walking since he was 12 years old. He balanced running and race walking each summer, but without winning much. This pattern continued until Clausen targeted the U.S. Junior Nationals. Clausen's first attempt failed due to a bad race plan. However, the following year, Clausen switched over to race walking full time and led the U.S. Junior squad of the North American Race Walking Cup to victory. Next, his goal was to win the Junior Nationals and qualify for the World Junior Championships in Greece. That's exactly what he did. After high school, Clausen headed to Duke University where he kept walking but not very seriously. In 1988, Clausen entered his first Olympic trials, finishing the 50K in 15th place. Shortly after the trials, Clausen won his first senior national title at the 40K National Championships. For the next few years, Clausen dabbled in race walking. He would race the indoor circuit, get fit by June, race at nationals, and participate in the U.S. Olympic Festival. Unlike many New Year's resolutions that go by the wayside, on January 1, 1995, Clausen resolved to dedicate himself to race walking. At first it was tough, but by June he finished fifth at Nationals and was on his way to taking a shot at making the Olympic team. From 1995 to 1996 and the Olympic trials, Clausen trained for over a year for the first time in his life. By March 1996, Clausen worked on the first step, getting the time standard required to participate in the Olympic Games. With the standard out of the way, all he had to do was win the Olympic trials. So Clausen stayed in North Carolina, got used to the heat, and followed through by winning the 1996 20K Olympic Trials in Atlanta. While Clausen's Olympic experience was disappointing, he realized that by working 40 to 60 hours a week and being self-coached, there was a lot of room for improvement. Clausen didn't want to go back to the Olympics as just a participant. So Clausen packed up, moved to Chula Vista, California, home of the new Olympic Training Center. In 1997, Clausen had three quality breakthroughs. Coach Bodon Bolakowski gave Clausen a strong base, while Enrique Pena tweaked it to perfection. At the 50K Nationals, Clausen walked a strong last 15K to PR with a time of 3.54. Next up, the World Cup, where Clausen walked a surprising time of 3.48, finishing 11th overall. But his highest achievement was yet to come. Clausen raced at the World Championships with a plan to beat Robert Korzanowski. Clausen matched stride for stride with him until 37.5K when he was DQ'd. Now without a game plan, Clausen struggled as he raced in a situation he had never expected to happen. Clausen grounded down, making sure nobody caught him. Clausen was the most dead he had ever been, walking a 350 50 
in 106 degree heat by the end of the race. Clausen crossed the line in fourth, but was eventually awarded the bronze medal when one of the finishers failed to pass his drug test. Like many race walkers, Philip Dunn happened upon the sport by accident. When Dunn was 10 years old, he entered the Junior Olympics 1500 meter run. Later, he saw on the schedule the 1500 meter race walk. He was confused because it was the same distance he had just run. His dad showed him what little he knew about race walking and Dunn jumped into the race and won it. As a 10 year old, Dunn thought that was cool. Dunn continued to race walk at the Junior Olympics and then later at the Junior Nationals but he mostly abandoned race walking while he focused on running in college. By the summer of 1993, Dunn's interest in race walking re-emerged and he moved to Lake Placid to train with Bob Ryan. Dunn was part of a small group of up-and-coming race walkers. Dunn figured he would give race walking his all for one year and achieved a fourth place finish at the Nationals in Knoxville. With the Olympics coming in 1996, Dunn extended his commitment and followed his coach to Virginia. While not qualifying for the Olympics, he finished a respectable sixth place at the trials. In 1997, he regrouped and moved out to the Arco Olympic Training Center in California, where he started to train for the 2000 trials. On a steady trajectory upward, Dunn broke through in 2000 by making his first Olympic team in the 50K. When Dunn is asked how he qualified for the Olympic team, he replies, count to seven. This is because over a four-hour race, he made the standard by only seven seconds. Since then, he has steadily improved, winning the 2001 50K U.S. title and being the top U.S. finisher at the 2002 World Cup with a PR of 3.56.30. He ended his season with his first ever number one U.S. ranking. Tim Seaman started out as a miler on his high school track team. However, Seaman's coach realized that he could score more points for the team by excelling in the race walk. Seaman's coach was right. Summer after his senior year, Seaman won the junior national title and later went on to break a long-standing record set by Tim Lewis. Given a scholarship to the University of Wisconsin at Parkside, he became the first four-time NAIA race walk champion. While earning his degree in political science, Seaman put his financial pursuits on hold and focused on his Olympic quest. Seaman moved to Georgia, switched coaches, and cut more than five minutes off his 20K time in the next year. Unfortunately, this was not enough to make the 1996 Olympic team, but he caught the Olympic fever. Seaman moved to Southern California to train at the Olympic Training Center while working on his master's degree in international relations. His Olympic dreams were reached in 2000 when he won the U.S. trials in a performance that gave him a meet record. After competing in the Olympics, Seaman returned to the U.S. and got married. Currently, Seaman is working towards his second Olympic birth and still training at the center.